Stan Gibalisco here to explain the operation of a weak signal bipolar transistor amplifier and to explain the function of each component. In this particular case we have an NPN type bipolar transistor. We have a signal input and a signal output. And um, the purpose of the amplifier, of course, is to take a very weak signal input and make it into a somewhat less weak signal output. It is a low-level amplifier, meaning uh, it operates, it's very sensitive and doesn't provide a great deal of output power. Uh, it, an audio preamplifier would be a good way to describe this, but the signal the AC signal appears here. Capacitor C2 allows the signal to pass through but blocks direct current so that we don't end up with some kind of a um, uh, short circuit of the, of the, uh, of the input bias voltages which are supplied by R2 and R3. R2 and R3 comprise a voltage divider that sets the DC base bias somewhere between 0 and plus 12 volts. C2 prevents that from being uh, upset by whatever is at the input. Sometimes the secondary winding of a transformer, for example, might short that out and reduce this bias to 0. You don't want that. You don't want it to be determined by anything but R2 and R3, a voltage divider. And I'm not specifying values because the optimum values vary from transistor to transistor, but the bias should be such that current flows through the transistor from the emitter to the collector for the entire cycle and that there be no distortion of the signal, that the amplification always be the same no matter where you are in the cycle. The purpose of resistor R1 is to elevate the emitter above ground for DC, helping to provide this optimum bias along with R2 and R3. The purpose of capacitor C1 is to make sure that the emitter is at ground for signal. This capacitor will allow the signal to pass straight through and therefore should be a relatively large value capacitor. So now we have a transistor that is biased ideally for uh, amplification of the signal provided that we choose the correct value for R4, uh, that uh, will, you don't want to directly connect this R4 to the plus 12 volts because the power supply is oftentimes um, has filter capacitors in it uh, that would sh uh, short the signal to ground. You don't want that. You don't want the signal shorted to ground here. You do want it shorted to ground here. You want it to pass through this capacitor. Um, but you and you want it to pass through this capacitor. But of course you want to keep it uh, above ground potential uh, for the signal because R4 will keep will, will avoid shorting out the signal. Yet it will allow a positive voltage to appear at the collector. And if you choose the value of R4 properly, you can get uh, a stronger or a larger fluctuation in current between the emitter and the collector than you will get between the emitter and the base. That's amplification. But there's a DC component to this signal and capacitor C3 gets rid of that so that you end up with only AC at the output. C3 should have a large enough value to pass the signal easily. It, like C2, uh, is a blocking capacitor, meaning that it blocks direct current, but it allows signal through. So at the output, you get an AC signal 
hopefully, if all of the values of the resistors are correct, such that it has a much greater amplitude than the input signal does. This is a current amplifier because it takes a small current change between the base and the emitter and turns it into a large current fluctuation between the emitter and the collector. Uh, but ultimately it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. What you get is a low voltage, very weak signal, perhaps only a few microvolts peak-to-peak -peak AC signal here, and maybe several millivolts peak-to-peak -peak AC signal here. So you are amplifying the, the voltage of the signal, but the, the transistor itself is amplifying current changes. Kind of a paradox there. But that is the way that a weak signal bipolar transistor amplifier operates. You may want to compare this circuit with the weak signal FET amplifier uh, that I uh, provide in a video fairly near in the sequence to this one. That amplifies the voltage. The FET amplifies the voltage, but the, the end result is the same with one exception. Because there is a constant flow of direct current from the uh, between the uh, emitter and the base, you get what is called hash or sh uh, electron motion noise on the signal, and that noise gets amplified along with the signal. So this amplifier will be noisier, and by noise I mean the roar or hiss that you associate with a, uh, just, you know, any amplifier that you turn up the volume loud enough without any signal, you'll hear it, a kind of a roar. But, but this has more of that than the FET amplifier does because the FET amplifier has no current flowing between the, uh, between the electrodes to cause that kind of noise. So they're, they do basically the same thing, the FET and the bipolar circuit, except for the fact that if you really want a low noise amplifier, you're better off using a field effect transistor rather than a bipolar transistor. Um, a viewer expressed a desire for me to explain the function of each component uh, in several different types of circuits and I hope I've done a satisfactory job for you here. Stangibilisco signing off. Until next time, so long.